Jack watched his office walls, sputter malfunctioning mathematical symbols, and release a flock of passenger pigeons. His nose was tickled with the odor of eucalyptus. Inside, the air rippled with synthetic pleasure and the taste of vanilla. I need to get in there, he told the government agent who blocked the doorway. No admittance, the agent said, until we've completed our investigation on the break-in. Puzzles, illegalities, and dilemmas stuck to Jack from which he then, usually, extracted himself. That gave him the dual reputation of a troubleshooter and a troublemaker. But the only thing he was dead sure about today was the troublemaking and sticking part of that assessment. The agent stepped in front of Jack, obscuring what the others were doing in there. National Security Office agents, goons with big guns bulging under their bulletproof suits. And no arguing with them. Today's trouble was the stuff you saw coming, but couldn't do a thing about. Like standing in front of a tidal wave. Jack hoped his office had been broken into, that this wasn't an NSO fishing trip. There were secrets in the bubble circuitry of his office that had to stay hidden. Things that could make his troubles multiply. I'll wait until you're done then. The agent glanced at his notepad, and a face materialized. Jack's with his sandy hair pulled into a ponytail and his hazel eyes bloodshot. You have an immediate interview with Mr. Dimitri, Bell Communications Center, sub-level three. Jack's stomach curdled. Interview was a polite word that meant they'd use invasive probes and mnemonic shadows to pry open his mind. Jack had worked with Dimitri and the NSO before. He knew all their nasty tricks. Thanks, Jack lied, turned from the illusions in his office, and walked down the hallway. From the fourth floor of the mathematics building, he took the arched bridge path that linked to the island's outer seawall. Not the most direct route, but he needed time to figure a way out of this jam. Cold night air and salt spray whipped around him. Electromagnetic pollution filtered through the hardware in his skull. A hundred conversations on the cell networks, and a patchwork of thermal images from the West Agco satellite overhead. 